will shape our future and bring back an industry that will help the environment, help farming remain economically viable, save valuable farmland, uh, help farming re remain economically viable, create jobs, and build upon the traditions that built America and made it great. I would like to thank uh, State Senators Schweik and Fulmer for having the foresight and the vision to recognize the potential of this industry and for do introducing the Industrial Hemp Act. We've been teaching about hemp in Pennsylvania for almost 18 years, and we are finally ready to take advantage of this exciting agricultural, economic, uh, and entrepreneurial opportunity that waits for us right now. Although we say that this is a new opportunity, actually it's a revival of an old industry that thrived in Pennsylvania for our first 200 years of existence. When William Penn founded Pennsylvania in 1681, he specifically intended for the Commonwealth to grow hemp. In 1683, one of the very first laws passed by the Pennsylvania General Assembly was called an act for the encouragement of raising hemp. In 1685, William Penn noted that there were already great quantities of hemp being raised in his province and proposed that hemp would be among the four staples of trade here. By the 1690s, the hemp industry was already well established here, with hemp mills running, rope walks making rope, hemp hecklers and weavers and farmers in every early settlement growing the crop. Continually encouraged throughout the early 1700s by the governors and general assemblies of Pennsylvania, Hemp production proceeded with vigor, and in 1729, the county of Lancaster was formed, containing the original Hempfield Township, named for, quote, the vast quantities of hemp that was raised there. In Lancaster County alone, between the years of 1720 and 1870, there were over 100 water-powered mills for processing hemp fiber, and there were dozens more hemp, uh, in Lancaster County alone, and there were dozens more hemp mills uh, in all the surrounding counties, hundreds throughout the state. There were almost as many mills for processing oil from the many tons of excess hemp seed, a byproduct of the enormous hemp crop grown for fiber. During the Revolutionary War, every farmer in Pennsylvania was told to grow as much hemp as possible, and in 1794, the hero of the Revolution, President George Washington, who grew hemp on his plantation in Virginia, visited a hemp mill in, owned by David Whitmer in Paradise Township in Lancaster County, and he also visited another hemp mill near Philadelphia to inspect this great industry. Hemp production in Pennsylvania was common until the mid-1800s. During the Civil War, hemp production here got an extra boost to make up for the shortage of cotton fiber due to the southern embargo. In 1870, 14 counties grew the 571 tons of hemp recorded in the state. Lancaster County led the way that year with 230 tons of hemp, while Adams County produced 123 tons. Bedford, Armstrong, Columbia, Union, Washington, Wayne, Schoolkill, York, Butler, Chester, Cumberland, and Somerset counties grew the remaining 218 tons of hemp that year. During the early 1900s, there was a resurgence of interest in growing hemp in Pennsylvania. The United States Department of Agriculture sent Leister Dewey to, the, to direct hemp trials in Hanover, Pennsylvania in 1907. By 1910, hundreds of area farmers were growing hemp for the Hanover Cordage Company. We know that some farmers grew hemp in PA into the late 1930s. Today, my good friend Sean House, who will speak here in a few minutes, makes hemp soil pretzels and other products from imported hemp seed from Canadian farmers. Sean would rather contract with local farmers to grow his seed. Sean is just one of many entrepreneurs who would love to contract out with Pennsylvania farmers. Many companies are looking to do some very interesting and intriguing things with hemp. Patriot Bioenergy, among others, are looking to make methane, biodiesel, ethanol, gasoline, jet fuel, and to use hemp as biomass in conjunction with coal for its BTU value and even in using it as horse bedding. Whole houses are being made with hempcrete, a mixture of hemp and lime. Many similar opportunities await intelligent industries here in Pennsylvania. The Keystone State has a unique strategic geographic location that gives us close, close proximity to all major markets on the East Coast. This will be of great benefit to us when Senate Bill 50 is passed and signed into law. There's much support from, for hemp farming in the state. 
1999 and again in 2000, the Lancaster Farm Bureau passed resolutions in favor of hemp. In November of 2000, a resolution in favor of hemp was passed by the Pennsylvania State Farm Bureau. The Pennsylvania Farmers Union supports hemp, and a resolution in favor of hemp was adopted by the PA State Grange in 2006. In the last four months, additional hemp resolutions were adopted by the Burnville Grange, the Pomona Grange in Berks County, and by Hamilton Borough Council in Adams County. I've had the privilege to these last 10 years uh, at the farm show to work at the Hempstall stand with Sean House, and we have talked to thousands of people. What we have learned is that hemp is not controversial at all here in Pennsylvania, and there is virtually unanimous support amongst the general population and lots of interest among farmers. Hundreds of state farmers have indicated strong interest in growing the crop as soon as they can get uh, the go-ahead and find a market. My ancestors on both my mother's side and my father's side grew hemp in Lancaster County for generations. I am proud of my ancestors and the founders of Pennsylvania in this nation. It is in their honor, as well as for the good of the present and future generations, that I work to restore this industry and eagerly await the days when fields of emerald green hemp once again wave summer breezes and after a long period of unnatural separation, the hemp is once again returned to Hempfield and the fertile soil of Pennsylvania.